Just a smile, just a lonely smile Let's me know where I belong Don't you know you're turning me on Just a smile. Well, it's actually a remix. That's a, that's. Hi, it's a re-record completely, and it was Pilot's first single, and we were we were all really happy with it and wanted it to be successful, so it was released as a first single, and then uh, it charted at number thirty-one. Mm -hmm. EMI were expecting, we were all expecting a lot more from it than that, so then we put out Magic. And uh, after magic, we put out just a smile again, <laughs> as if to say, did you know hear it the first time? <laughs> and it was a similar reaction. There's, you know? there's actually loads and loads of bands that have done that, haven't they? Aye. You know, they've released a single, it's not done anything. And then, Aye, and I think then they thought, now that the name Pilot's established, let's try this just a smile again. Yeah. And did it, did it work the second time? No, really, it was about the same. <laughs> 36, <laughs> I think. Ah, oh, cool. Where, where, uh, where did the uh, magic in January chart? Uh, Magic was number 11 in the UK, mm -hmm. it was number 5 in the USA, and it was number 1 in Australia for 11 weeks. So they keep telling me, 11 weeks, and they got fed up of playing the same video over and over and over again, and eventually they had to refuse, a bit of like the wet, wet, wet thing, <laughs> refuse to uh, play that, it anymore. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody plays that, or Brian Adams. <laughs> Nobody plays it again. That's it. It's, it's, it's binned. Well, I'm glad to see Magic still gets played a lot, so I'm happy about that. Now, uh, your friend and mine, Stuart Stott, uh, commented on Facebook earlier on saying, Davey's, got, uh, Davey's <laughs> sure to have quite a few stories uh, about back in the day, should we describe it. Uh, but I think the question that most listeners would be, be asking is, you know, was it rock and roll lifestyle? Was that, you know, did it all happen? 
Uh, the ma- majority of the time, yes, it did. There's, there's a lot more hanging about involved in a rock and roll lifestyle than people realise. However, when you're out there doing it, when you're doing your interviews and when you're doing your TVs and radios and, and travelling from country to country, dreading about, it is the rock and roll lifestyle and you live it and love every minute of it. Uh, and um, you tend to adapt to that kind of lifestyle and get involved in all the um, activities that you shouldn't be involved in because Re- of it. Recreational activities. <laughs> ah, you want to play the part, you know, you want to be the rock star. I'll mm-hmm. give you an example of that. Um, I worked with Elton John in the mid-80s, name-dropping again. Oh, uh, and it's, I was with him for... It's a habit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was with him for about three years, and, and that was about the time when Elton was a bit wild parties every night after the shows and lots of things going on and um, that was the rock and roll lifestyle um, I, I left Elton went on to work with other people like Rick Waitman and whatnot. and then in the mid 90s I was asked to go back to Elton to do a tour of America and uh, South America so I, I started that tour a bit apprehensive wondering oh I wonder if it's all that party and all the rest of it it wasn't it was completely changed Elton had dried out completely they were all on their health kick they were all walking about other band walking about with bottles of water going out jogging first thing in the morning I thought this isn't even a rock and roll lifestyle for me you know it's like meeting Tam White and uh, Asda one time and he's saying Davey this isn't very rock and roll you know it's that kind of thing (laughs) Uh, so I thought we did the first gig and uh, I, I went back to my hotel room and I'm buzzing. I just played in front of 15,000 people and I thought, surely they know I've gone to bed. But they, they did. They asked, good night, David. See you in the morning. I thought, wait a minute. So I thought, I'm going down to the bar. So I went down to the bar in the hotel and there in front of me was uh, David Johnston, the long blonde hair. He was back to it, was to me. He was sitting at the bar. He had a bucket with a bottle of champagne in it and a packet of Golden Virginia at the side of him. Mm-hmm. And as I walked to him, I was thinking, this is the rock and roll life. <laughs> you know? So I joined him for a drink. <laughs> uh, quite right, quite right. But, you know, obviously, as, as you grow up, I suppose, <laughs> uh, you know, things change and priorities change. And, you know, that, that uh, the appeal of going away on tour and everything else, you know, maybe, maybe isn't there as much... You know, nowadays, it's, it's about enjoying your music nowadays. That's it is, it's all enjoyment. A, a lot of the, well, for musicians, you know, there's a lot of competition involved. You always want to be better than everybody else, so there's always a wee bit of competition. I don't think I have that competitive side of me anymore. I still want to achieve things. I still want to write another great song if I can, and I'll never stop doing that. But for now, it's all fun. It really is fun. Mm. And, and just and just sitting back. Relax, and I, I relax I, with it. I, I actually had somebody on the, the show uh, a number of weeks ago who says it's it's good to be able to sit back nowadays and enjoy the music that you're writing. You know, just not Aye. just writing it for for the, the the sake of trying to find that song. Aye. Uh, but to actually sit back and enjoy your own music. And there's no pressure on me. You know, usually when you're signed to a record company, it's uh, you've got to do an album a year. There's no pressure on me to write an album. I just write an album when mm-hmm. when I feel like it. <laughs> if it, if sit, it comes to me <laughs> sitting with the feet up with the, 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 cra- the, the cravat and like, sitting in there oh no I was going to mention <laughs> uh, now we're going to play another one from your album which is track number four uh, Don't Touch Me alright uh, uh, well tell us I, a bit about this alright I play in a band called The Flavours uh, we play in Edinburgh quite a bit we had a residency for a long time somewhere but we're now branched out and we do a lot of corporate stuff and whatnot. But uh, one of the guys in the band has a villa in, in France. And when he first purchased the villa, he said, let's take the band out, we'll all go out and we'll just have a great laugh a week together, you know. Uh, so we did that. And we did get drunk every night, I must admit, we did. And we were doing all our own cooking. We were doing a, a kind of, um, I can't remember what it's called, that cookery programme where, where each person cooks each night and you judge each other we did that oh, it's kind a, of come, come down with me sort <laughs> of thing a, come down with me we did that and uh, so one night Callie the guitar player cooked and then after it we're all sitting about playing the guitar and whatnot. and Callie said I'm going to get really drunk tonight and Stevie the singer said well if you're going to get drunk don't touch me at which point I picked up the guitar and I just started to sing if you're going to get drunk don't touch me <laughs> And they said, did you just make that up? Yeah. So it, it just kept playing it, kept playing it, and, and, and you know, it, it expands and it became a whole tune, and this is the whole tune on the album. Just just before I play it, I, I was, it's funny, you touched on something there. Is, 
is it just, you know, sometimes the, the ideas for a song just comes from nowhere or, or just from I, a small event and you think, oh. With me, most of the time it's been triggered by something that somebody has said or a phrase that I like the sound of. Like, for instance, magic, when I sing, I've never been away, never seen a day break. That was my wife saying to me when I had to get up early one morning, six o'clock in the morning, we're going to bed, and she said to me, I've never been awake to see the daybreak. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I can hear a song there. <laughs> uh, uh, but did she get the royalties for it? <laughs> she, uh, she gets half. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to play this, and uh, don't touch me. get drunk, don't touch me If you're gonna get drunk, don't feel me Cause I know I'm a lucky boy, yes I know You wanna give me joy And it sure looks plain to see You wanna make good love to me I know If you're gonna get drunk, don't touch me Don't think of me Because 